Welcome back. As promised, we are now taking a closer look at some of the Toronto wards where two incumbent candidates are now pitted against each other. So former colleagues and either, uh, even friends are now political foes because of the decision to downsize council from 47 to 25 seats. And joining me now are Anthony Peruzza and Giorgio Mammoliti, who are both long-standing councillors in this city and now both running in the same ward, the newly formed Ward 7. Uh, Humber River Black Creek. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, nice to be here. Georgia, let me just start with you. You have been a long time supporter of the Fords, but now Premier Doug Ford with this move has provided you with your biggest political challenge yet with even a recent poll suggesting that you are trailing Anthony Peruzza in the polls uh, and that you might even stand to lose this election. So do you think that Downsizing council was a good idea. First of all, yes, I think uh, I think downsizing was a great idea. Finally, the suburbs have got some somewhat of a voice because I think we might make up the majority of the votes, which means budgets and getting money filtered back up to the suburbs might be possible. Uh, and then, of course, it's it's about it's about streamlining discussions at city hall and making them faster. And it's about respecting the taxpayer in terms of how we spend your dollar. We can probably do it better uh, with 25 councillors than than we've done with 47. At the end of the day, the poll that you're talking about, uh, the, the polling company that, did, that has, has done this has been very off on many other uh, uh, polls they've done. Uh, as, as Rob Ford, uh, the days of Rob Ford, they did the same thing with them. It's a left-leaning company that wants everybody to believe that the left-leaning... So uh, not too concerned. You're not too concerned not about that. Were you in favor of downsizing, Anthony Peruzza? You know what? Um, I think we need to move beyond that. I, I think... Uh, uh, what's really, really important now, uh, now more than ever, is that we get somebody down at City Hall who's actually going to work, roll up their sleeves and actually uh, work for the community, work to get things done, work to fix the roads, work to fix the sewers, work to fix the parks, making sure that people have access to the services they need, making sure, as, uh, as uh, Councillor Mamaliti suggests, that, that you're going to work hard to get those investments that uh, the neighborhood and communities need. And, and, uh, and I think that in my ward, in Ward 8, I think people know uh, the kind of work that I've done, uh, the hard work that I've done. Uh, the investments that I brought into into the neighborhood, into the community. Now I need to communicate that into a much larger area, uh, and I think I'm trying to do that. And I think it's reflective in the in the numbers in the polls that you just suggested. Well, let's look at the numbers here. Uh, th th this ward has effect effectively doubled in size. How does one effectively service a ward that size? It's over a hundred thousand people. Especially because I think what people like about a city council is that they feel that they can go to them with their very localized issues. It just seems like a massive task. How does a, how does a federal MP do it? How does a, a, a provincial MPP do it? It's exactly the same area. I've, I've been an MPP before and I've actually represented the, the area that I'm now going to re represent after this particular election. It's, it's not that hard. You just have to work a little harder, maybe another assistant or two. Uh, to make sure that administratively you're doing it. Don't be afraid of it. This is going to work. Uh, we are, we're going to be just fine. Are you afraid of it? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm, I'm worried about it. I'm concerned about it. I'm concerned as it relates to services and, and, and the things that people need. Uh, you know what? Counselor's job, what a counselor's job is, is neighborhood development. We build the, the ward up, the community up, neighborhood by neighborhood by neighborhood. MPPs don't do that. MPs don't do that. They, it's not the same role. The councillor has done the role. He understands that. But we are going to find a way to do that. We need to find a way to do that because that's the only way you're going to build a great city. Neighborhood to neighborhood, going out, talking to the people in those neighborhoods, finding out from them what the, what the problems are in those particular areas, bringing them together, working with them to solve their problems because more often than not they're the ones that understand their neighborhood far far better than we do. Councillor Mamalita, you're no stranger to controversy obviously but you know recently there have been some quite controversial comments that you have made you've come under fire for criticizing and disparaging some of your own constituents comparing some of your constituents in Jane and Finch uh, to cockroaches holding up a, a sign I think we have uh, the, the, the Facebook post or the, the tweet where you suggested that we should just knock down social housing. I'm serious about my job. You I'm stand serious, by those comments you don't retract them at all. I'm serious about going after the drug dealers. I'm 
serious about going after the gang members and those people that are making life miserable in our TCHC units for those that live there and the people around there. It's gotten way too, too out of hand. So I'm serious about it and I mean my and I mean business. When I talk about sledgehammers uh, bringing that into the fold, I'm talking about stopping segregation in one of the largest social housing pockets in this city that happens to be harboring some of the most dangerous people in this city. So we need to talk about it and we need to do what Regent Park has done. We need to do what Lawrence Heights has done. I wrote that policy, that affordable housing policy, that has allowed us to re revitalize pockets like that. It's Jane and Finch's turn to do the same thing. 60% of the people in that corridor are on welfare. It's time that stops and it's time that we're real about getting rid of those gangbangers that seem to be running so our social housing units. Top issue for you, yeah, Councillor. You know, you know what? I'm not about labels or name calling. There is no question that we need to do something about the housing. In fact, we're doing that. For example, at the Grassways, uh, the housing was dilapidated, it's falling down. It's being taken down and it's going to be rebuilt. But it needs to be rebuilt with the, with the neighborhoods, with the local communities involved, and it needs to be made to work. Edgeley Village, same thing. It's out there. It's nothing new. He didn't invent this. Uh, uh, but I'll tell you this. You really want to go after crime, right? Vote to ban guns. I voted to ban guns. He voted to keep guns. I voted to take guns away from gang members. He voted to give guns to gang members. I'm sorry, but that's not the solution. That's not the way you solve crime. Uh, you know, kids are killing kids. How? With handguns in their pockets. We need to get the handguns out of the kids' pockets. It's, it's being before we go, before being we go. sympathetic to the drug dealers and those that like to kill people. That's we're what he's doing right now. We're almost completely out of time, and I want to ask you both the same question, to, to, to name something that you admire in your opponent. But it's got to be fast. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> You know, I'm going to go back to, to the thing that he admired most about himself. He's a little taller than I am. And, I, and now that I'm standing next to him, uh, shoulder to shoulder, I see that he is a little taller than me. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I concede that point. It's very admirable. And, uh, I think Anthony's a great father.